Live from Chase at 12, <clears throat> Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, the latest on a shootout on the east side after police say they found a car full of bullet holes. Plus, with less than seven weeks before Election Day, President Donald Trump facing a group of uncommitted voters in a 90-minute town hall. And a forecast update, according to Mike Osterage, rain chances starting to pick up. The details on that are coming up. We know you're interested about that as you kick off your day. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is the 16th of September. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, I'm excited about the rain chances. Well, they have improved. Uh, let's get the details on when that might happen with Mike Osterhage. If we could spread this out over several days, that would be awesome. Well, that's pretty much the way it's going to be. Now, it won't be raining, you know, constantly throughout the, the of next course. few days. But we've got about 40, 50 percent chance of rain as Great. we go into the next couple of days, starting with this afternoon. We don't have anything out there as of right now. Uh, it's once again, like yesterday, we've got temperatures that are about, well, we're at 75 right now. So we're still about six degrees above normal here in town, some mid 60s and parts of the hill country. It's not bad when you step outside. And as far as the allergens are concerned, ragweed and fall elm are on the moderate side. Mold did uh, drop down. Temperatures throughout the rest of today, we are going to be seeing uh, right around mid 80s today at noon. We'll have partly sunny skies. This morning we're going to be starting off mid 70s, so we will drop down maybe another couple of degrees. And that'll be about it with that uh, light northeasterly breeze out there. And then uh, mostly cloudy skies, and we will have some scattered showers around the area later on this afternoon. I'm going to go with 89 for a high temperature. I think enough clouds to keep temperatures down just a little bit. So again, a, a decent chance for some rain and that, like I said, will extend into the next couple of days. How about the weekend forecast? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. How's the commute starting off, sir? Right now, not too bad, despite the fact that uh, currently there are a few more vehicles on the roadway that we normally see this early in the morning. So could be some uh, of the overnight crew getting an early start headed home. Right now, as we take a look at Trans Guide, the I-10 Medical East and Westbound Lane, so far no issues there. Moving over to 21, 410 uh, by the airport, the uh, traffic moving along fairly well. And a little bit of construction there, I-10 at the rim, just like yesterday. So it will be cleared up before we hit that peak congestion. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. We'll go to the latest on a shooting on the east side. San Antonio police saying a car was found with bullet holes last night and two blocks away, the victim was found. That 28 year old man was shot multiple times and was taken to the hospital. Police say that man managed to make it to the Walter Food Mart on Burnett Street near the intersection of Walters. Police say they found an abandoned car with the bullet holes where they think that shooting happened. An identity has been released following a deadly crash in East Bear County you first saw here on GMSA. Our Sarah Costa was live there all morning yesterday and joins us now with an update for us. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Is that me? Oh, no, my mic is working. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can't, can't hear you at this particular second. Okay, well, why don't you guys take the read because my mic is on and I'll leave my battery. Okay, we're having a microphone issue, folks. All right. All right. The medical examiner is saying the woman killed is identified as 31 year old Adriana Moore. Bear County Sheriff's deputies told Sarah that she was thrown from a truck along FM 1518 near 1604 after she lost control and rolled the truck several times. That crash happening just after midnight. That was yesterday. Deputies say the truck took out some poles and rolled for roughly 75 yards before finally coming to a stop. Moore was ejected from the vehicle and was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, a witness driving behind the woman told deputies they were coming from a party in the area where they saw the crash happen. It's unclear if alcohol played a factor. Well, city health officials are hoping local coronavirus numbers remain on a downward trend as we move closer to marking two weeks after Labor Day. There were 115 new COVID-19 cases reported in the newest Bear County report, along with three new deaths. At the same time, there were another or was another decrease in COVID-19 patients in local hospitals. 228 people are hospitalized, 105 in intensive care. And for the first time in quite a while, the number of people on ventilators has dipped below 50 to 47. Last night, President Trump took questions from undecided voters in an ABC News town hall. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more from Washington, D.C. 
Overnight, President Trump talking directly to uncommitted voters in a town hall hosted by ABC's okay. George Stephanopoulos. You should know that some of these people voted for you last time around. Some voted for Hillary Clinton. No questions off limits amid the pandemic as the U.S. nears 200,000 American lives lost. Voters pressing Trump on his administration's response. If you believe it's the president's responsibility to protect America, why would you downplay a pandemic that is known to disproportionately harm low-income families and minority communities? Yeah, well, I didn't downplay it. I actually, in many ways, I upplayed it in terms of action. My action was very strong. Yourself? Trump attempting to defend his handling of the pandemic, even though he told journalist Bob Woodward on tape he was downplaying it. Once again, Trump insisted the virus will disappear. Why don't you wear a mask more often? Well, I do wear them when I have to and when I'm in hospitals and other locations. But the president also pressed on his plan for the future of health insurance. We're going to be doing a health care plan very strongly and protect people with pre-existing conditions. I will say this, they will not do that Mr. because they have socialized. I have to stop you there. I just have to stop you there. You've been promising a new health care plan. We interviewed, I interviewed you in June of last year. You said the health care plan would come in two weeks. You've been trying to strike down the existing conditions. I have it already, and it's a much better plan for you. Joe Biden slamming the president, accusing him of not being up front with the American people, releasing this statement. Trump just confirmed tonight yet again that even after eight months of letting the worst public health crisis in a hundred years spiral out of control, that not only does he not have a plan, he doesn't have a clue. Biden also continuing to hit the president over that Atlantic magazine report denied by the White House that Trump called fallen war heroes suckers and losers. Donald Trump doesn't seem to be able to conceive the idea of selfless service or being part of a cause that's bigger than yourself. And ABC News offered to host a similar town hall with Joe Biden, but both ABC News and the campaign could not find a mutually agreeable date. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Now 437, 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, at least one major airline unveiling new technology designed to kill viruses and bacteria as companies look to win back travelers. And next as Hurricane Sally spins into the Gulf Coast, why some are already comparing it to Hurricane Harvey. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 75 degrees, um, a little warm in comparison to the past few days, but we're looking forward to rain. We're gonna check in with Mike in just a bit. Four forty. Welcome back to GMSA and your other morning headline to slow moving disaster churning towards the U.S. Gulf Coast. Hurricane Sally getting closer to shore as we speak. The category two storm triggering historic and life threatening flooding in Alabama and Mississippi. Sally creeping towards shore at just two miles an hour. That's slower than the average human walking pace of three to four miles per hour. And before leaving the coastlines, expect to drop three to four months worth of rain in some places. The storm's slow progression being prepared or compared rather to that of Hurricane Harvey, which swamped the Houston metro area back in 2017. Japan's parliament has now officially elected Yoshidi Suga as prime minister, replacing long serving leader Shinzo Abe with his right hand man. Now, Suga had been chosen as leader of the ruling party earlier this week. That basically assured he would succeed Abe, who resigned earlier in the day because of poor health. Suga has stressed his background as a farmer's son and a self made politician in promising to serve the interests of ordinary people and rural communities. He said he will pursue Abe's unfinished policies and that his top priorities will be fighting the coronavirus and turning around an economy battered by the pandemic. This morning, Israel cleaning up after two rockets were fired from Gaza towards two cities. Emergency services say two people were hurt after those rockets fell in one neighborhood. There are no reports of serious injuries or fatalities. The army says a second rocket was successfully intercepted by the country's Iron Dome aerial defense system. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was at the White House Tuesday meeting with the leaders of the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain to sign a much anticipated peace deal. Time now, 441 and 75 degrees. Up next, a look at how a San Antonio businessman is persevering through tough times brought on by the pandemic. Also up next, how United Airlines is leading the way when it comes to using technology to fight off viruses and bacteria on its planes.
In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. This morning, United is giving us an up-close look at a powerful new robot spraying a protectant intended to kill viruses and bacteria. How can you be sure it works? Well, look, th this, this is one of the reasons that we have complementary technology that we're using. Um, and the combination of this antimicrobial technology along with the disinfect disinfectant application technology that we're using, along with masks, um, all of that together provides for a really safe environment on board our aircraft. But with the mist awaiting EPA approval, some doctors would like to see more data. There should be some caution here because the studies and the information is evolving. We don't yet know how this impacts people's health. And we'll show you much more of this new technology coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Like many, a San Antonio small businessman has been hit hard during the pandemic, but despite that, he says he does not want to quit. 12 On Your Side's Marilyn Moritz introduces us to a man who's made a career out of a needle and thread. Hello. How are you? Hi, how are you? It's a long way from Saville Row, but inside this modest shop, Juan Rios is making San Antonio more dapper. He's a tailor, spiffing up corporate suits, doctors, lawyers. First of all, if you are a doctor and you don't dress well, nobody's gonna wanna go with you. I mean, it's the same as the lawyers. No problema. Rios learned his trade as a child in Mexico. A move to Chicago had him working for Ralph Lauren Polo and launching his small business, Chicago Custom Tailor Shop. Moving here 25 years ago, he kept the name and sewed up success. But since spring, there hasn't been enough work to pay his few employees. It is worrying because, I mean, you know, the bills don't stop. So for the first time in his career, he got a loan, a PPP loan. He may be the exception. It's been a challenge for many minority-owned small businesses to get a loan from the government's payroll protection program. You have to talk the bank lingo or you're not, you know, you're not seen as a successful business. That's where Lift Fund comes in. Not only is the nonprofit micro lender helping small struggling businesses access cash, it educates too. And eventually you graduate from our program because you've got that financial know-how on how to uh, present your numbers uh, and be able then to go to the traditional banks. My name is Juan Rios, my card is there. As for Rios, he hopes more work comes in before the money runs out, leaving him hanging by a thread. I don't wanna quit. You know, I wanna do whatever I can to stay alive. I hope I can survive. Thank you, we'll see you first. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 447 and I see a few flashing lights just past camera two here over towards where Marcus is perched in the studio. That's the uh, construction. <clears throat> ah. And just a minute ago, that was the uh, Bob Hall version of that Transguide camera. Right now as we take a look, uh, not too bad there. Things look pretty good. Uh, we can see that the traffic is moving along. They're gonna clear this up here shortly. I-10, Colorado, no issues there. Then moving over to 37 in Houston, you can see uh, travel north and southbound along uh, 37. So far, still looking great. 410 at Highway 151. We're used to seeing a lot of construction there. However, everything's f uh, flowing freely right now, looking pretty good. Moving over to 410 McCullough, up there closer to the airport. No problems there right now. All right, thank you, Marcus. We've got another beautiful yeah. picture where Woodlawn Lake could be sub for one of the great lakes up in Minnesota, perhaps. Exactly, and uh, Mr. Uh, McClellan takes some beautiful pictures. Never get tired of seeing these, so thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect uh, shots out there. All right, we don't have much going on as of right now. A fairly tranquil picture looking at downtown and forecast highs today going for the upper 80s, right around 90, give or take. Depends on if there's enough of a hole in the clouds later on today, but I think we're going to have a, a few more clouds hanging around here and the better chance for some rain. It will be improving later on. So again, average about 90 around the area today. Heat index, though, it will be a few degrees above that because we will have some more leftover humidity around the area. But then again, that's going to get squeezed out in the form of some rain. Satellite picture, we did have a couple of showers along the, the coastal plain yesterday in the past 12 hours, and uh, obviously those fizzled on out. However, computer models 
do have the chance for a couple of more showers around here. As a matter of fact, this uh, rapid update model is fairly, I think, right on track with what's going to be going on. A couple of them trying to develop here along the coastal plain. And then as the afternoon rolls on and into mid afternoon, we start to see a few of them, a few more pop up around here in the afternoon heating. And that's going to go on in through about dinner time, of course. And then once the sun starts to go down a little bit more, then these are going to be dying down. We'll still have a few of them left over down here along the coastal plain. So like I said, I think this computer model does a really good job as far as handling uh, the rain situation. So this storm, because it is so slow moving, and as Mark mentioned, it's moving slower than somebody walks, actually. And yesterday, if you recall at this time, the update, which came out at 4 o'clock in the morning like this one did, did not have it becoming a Category 2 storm because it had it moving on shore a little bit quicker. But it has been sitting out here and just languishing in the in the the bath water of the Gulf of Mexico. So it did become a category two storm with 105 mile per hour winds. And I just read the very latest discussion and it says, so I guess technically it has not made landfall, but it says the the northern eye wall is just barely kind of scooching on in here right around Pensacola and it will continue to move on in. So sometime between now and about noon is when this thing's actually going to be moving over land or maybe even in the, the next couple of hours. But again, things moving just so slow and then it will continue to work its way off to the east. It's not going to have any any effect on our weather whatsoever around here. As far as the forecast today, 85 degrees, partly sunny skies. We've got uh, just our few morning clouds hanging around here right now, but the clouds will begin to kind of thicken up just a little bit more. And then later on this afternoon, 90, <clears throat> excuse me, that was going to be 89 for a high temperature. Got a little bit, got some new graphics here, and it's like computers, you know, you never know where the music's coming from. Some scattered showers and maybe a storm around the area. And then going into tomorrow, I think we have a few more clouds hanging around here, 85 for a high temperature. Same thing on Friday. And then we're going to move into a long period, hopefully get some decent rain because we've got a long dry spell going in through at least the middle part of next week. Temperatures will be about normal. Good looking weekend, some low humidity, so very pleasant. And the best part of that extended forecast, the big old fall leaf there showing up on yes, Tuesday. Coming up soon, but I'm glad it's going to start to feel that way, at least let's, over the weekend. Let's hope Mother Nature reads the calendar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's hope that she does. Yeah. Her track record's not always great. And makes temperatures match up. <laughs> we shall see. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 452, 75 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the new season of the Star Wars spinoff series, The Mandalorian. Star Wars fans rejoice. We finally got our first trailer for the second season of The Mandalorian. It's already been viewed more than four million times on YouTube, at least three million of those from our producer, Hardy. I was like, one of them's for me. <laughs> this is the way, and for what else is happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A movie about Madonna is coming, and the director knows the superstar singer really, really well because the director is Madonna. The material girl will direct a movie about her own life, and she's co-writing it with Oscar-winning Juno writer Diablo Cody. The lead role expected to be among the most coveted in Hollywood, but no word yet who may be in the running. Do anything for it's the end of one of rap's royal couples. Cardi B and her husband Offset are getting divorced. The WAP rapper filed papers in Atlanta saying the marriage is, quote, irretrievably broken and there are no prospects for a reconciliation. She's asking for custody of their two-year-old daughter, Culture. Cardi and Offset were married just shy of three years. A TV series about the making of the iconic Oscar-winning movie The Godfather is in the works. It'll be a scripted drama based on producer Al Ruddy's experience working on the film. The show will be for Paramount Plus, which will be the new name of the streaming service CBS All Access. We could all use a little more Baby Yoda in our lives, and that's just what we got in the first trailer for the second season of The Mandalorian. This Star Wars spin-off show returns to Disney Plus October 30th. And don't be jealous, it's Nick Jonas's birthday today. The pop star is 28, while Emmy Award-winning comic actress Amy Poehler is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I haven't watched the full trailer for Mandalorian oh, yet. It looks cool. Hardy, what's your uh, review so far of Mandalorian's uh, upcoming season? Excellent. Very good. I, I agree, Hardy. Yeah. In, in Hardy, we trust. Yes, we do. And I'm super excited because my little girl actually likes it. So that'll allow me to watch it in peace. There you go. <laughs> yes, you might you might enjoy this one yes. and not have kid songs in your 
It's an earworm forever. Right. 457, 75 degrees. And still ahead, the latest on Hurricane Sally as it's slowing, starting to come ashore after turning in the Gulf several days and gaining strength. Apple showing off the new iPad Air. More details on the device and five colors you can pick from ahead in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm Elwin Lopez along the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and we are tracking Hurricane Sally as she inches closer to the shore. Here at home, a West Side neighborhood reacting after a man was shot and killed during an incident involving San Antonio police. And taking a look out with live cam this morning, it is 75 degrees, but we are expecting rain. So if you didn't get any yesterday, you might get some today. There are some chances. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, September 16th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I didn't get rain. What about you? Nope, nothing. Not no, not even close yesterday. Mike Osterhage is jogging back over to make a last <laughs> minute adjustment. The amount of calories the man burns running across the studio is astounding. He will never need to run a marathon in his life. No, you're going to stay fit forever, Mike. You know, certain times, get your breath. We, we get things all kind of, you know, moved around here and we get into the different routines, but every once in a while, you know, it just it just ain't clicking here. So anyway, I don't have the little uh, thing going across here and all that stuff. I'm just kind of been preoccupied. What I can tell you, though, is temperatures around the area right now are very consistent. Everybody in the mid 70s uh, we've got some clouds that have started to move on in here. Stinson 75 Kelly at uh, 74. Same thing at Randolph as uh, 75 at the airport, uh, which, you know, it's not bad. Humidity is OK this morning. However, these numbers are about six, seven degrees above their respective normals. The normal low temperature right now is 69 here in town. So yeah, compared to normal, it is on the warm side. Ragweed, fall elm are both moderate. A little bit of mold is showing up and throughout the rest of the morning, partly cloudy. Still, it's a pleasant morning out there. And then later on this afternoon, scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Got about a 40% chance for some rain today. And then going into tomorrow, those rain chances are going to be creeping up just a little bit more as we go into tomorrow. And still sticking around into Friday the weekend. Little hint, looks great. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's going on, sir? Well, Mike, as we take a look at the roadways, still looking great out there. So we're off to an awesome start this morning with no accidents on the highways. Take a look at Transguide. 604 there, no problems uh, up there on the northwest side. I-10 at the rim, still have that construction there between the east and the westbound lanes. And then I-10 and Dominion there, you start to see some of those uh, Barrels, construction barrels, blading everybody off to the access road, but no problems there. 35 at FM 1103 and Northwest Military Highway in 410 looking pretty good. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Right now we want to get a late breaking news on the southeast side of San Antonio. Police are investigating a deadly shooting. It happened in the 4600 block of Pecan Valley. That's near East South Cross. Our Katrina Robert just arrived at the scene. Now, Katrina, what can you tell us? I can tell you there were two victims in all. One person killed here at these apartments. This is where police also are very actively working the scene. They have a black barrier up and they are working behind there. That is where they found the body of the man who was killed, a man in his 40s. Police also found the suspect in this area. Now they say uh, they were called, well, they actually didn't get called here. They were parked just down the street and heard gunshots, came over here, and they found a man crouching down with a rifle in his hands. Police took him into custody and realized that he, they believe he was the shooter. Uh, they did find the victim, one victim dead here on the sidewalk. They say a man who was in his apartment also was hit by that gunfire, shot in his backside. He was taken to a hospital. The police say that they believe that the suspect had been involved in some sort of a physical fight here earlier, came back just before four with the rifle, possibly also wearing a bulletproof vest, police tell us, and that is when he opened fire. They're not sure if the man who was shot and killed was involved in the earlier fight or if he was just standing there and happened to be hit by the gunfire, but they believe the man in his apartment was just sort of an innocent bystander, someone who was sleeping and hit by the stray gunfire. They have the suspect downtown right now. They're questioning him to try to see if they can get more information about what happened. But again, one man killed, another man sleeping in bed, hit by gunfire, and the suspect in custody. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. Update on State Rep. Ray Lopez recovering this morning after undergoing precautionary coronary bypass surgery. According to a press release, immediately following the procedure yesterday, a doctor informed Representative Lopez's family surgery went well. He had a mild heart attack this past weekend. The procedure meant to treat symptoms of coronary artery disease, a condition that runs in his family. Lopez's wife, Evelyn, is thanking doctors as well as all the people that have prayed or provided well wishes to the Lopez family. Lopez says he is eager to get back home and get back to work. Hurricane Sally growing into a Category 2 hurricane overnight. People from Alabama to the Florida Panhandle are bracing for more than two feet of rain. ABC's Elwin Lopez has the latest. Sally strengthens as she inches ashore. Oh, my God. Forecasters warn the slow motion of this storm will bring historic life-threatening flash floods. Flood alerts stretching nearly 700 miles along the Gulf Coast. More than 10 feet of storm surge expected to slam low-lying areas between Biloxi and Pensacola. Already hammering Florida. Wind gusts toppling trees, rain tearing docks apart. This barge crashing into a bridge, knocked loose by heavy winds. And in Alabama, floodwaters cut off roads, trapping people riding out the storm. We literally have water coming in the windows and the door. And he's having to hold the door shut to keep it flowing open. An angry gust and knocking power out in Gulf Shores. And in just 24 hours, the slow pace of this storm could bring four months of rain. I think everybody on the Gulf Coast just needs everybody's prayers because um, there's going to be a lot of damage. Unlike Laura, we're not expecting Hurricane Sally to move through quickly. And the issue with that is that it will bring flash floods and life-threatening storm surge to coastal areas and perhaps affecting people for days to come. In Bay St. Louis, Elwin Lopez, ABC News. Here at home, a family in shock after their loved one was shot and killed while police were serving two arrest warrants. It happened on Willie Drive yesterday afternoon. Chief William McManus says officers were serving two domestic violence arrest warrants to 55-year-old Daryl Zamalt. That's when the chief says Zamalt hit one of the officers in the head with a paint can. McManus also says Zamalt grabbed one of the officer's guns before another officer shot him. Zamalt's family is questioning the details of the investigation. He had just literally spoke to his attorney and said, I would never arrest arrest because I don't want to end up like George Floyd. He's not a, he was not ever a dangerous person. Mm. He didn't have that in his soul or in demeanor, period, mm. the way he was. According to Bear County criminal court records, Zamalt was out on bond for stalking and two counts of assault on a peace officer. He previously served time in jail for resisting arrest. The family is demanding body cam footage be released. 507, 75 degrees. And still ahead, Apple is showing off new health features in its new watch. We're gonna have a preview. Whether your child is learning from home or going to school, chances are you'll be spending some time making lunches. Up next, we have some fun ways to make lunches fun, easy, and nutritious. That'll be helpful. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 75 degrees. We're looking forward to a nice weekend, but for now, we're going to get some rain. Yay! We're going to find out when and where with Mike in just a bit. And welcome back. It's 511. Whether your kids continue to learn at home or they're back in the classroom or they're on a hybrid schedule, chances are you're going to be spending some time making lunches. But it doesn't always have to be a chore. Eric Hernandez is here to show us some strategies for making lunches easy, fun, and nutritious. Making lunch at home is a great way to teach your kids about different foods. Here are some tips for some simple and tasty lunches for this unconventional school year. First off, plan your lunches ahead of time. According to CNN, one pediatric dietitian says during this time of uncertainty, planning meals can help establish a sense of normalcy for kids, not to mention preparing the lunch just as if you would pack it for school will help prevent your children from mindless eating and wandering to the kitchen. Second, keep it simple. Target four items in lunch, a protein, a fruit or vegetable, whole grains, and a dairy food such as cheese, yogurt, or milk. Next, involve your kids in lunch prep. 
Children are more likely to eat nutritious meals if they play a role in creating them. When planning, allow your kids to suggest ideas and shop for foods, even if you are purchasing foods online. For something quick and easy, consider making lunch foods in advance and freeze them. Some ideas include homemade burritos, grilled sandwiches, soups, or stews. Finally, make it fun. Try making food faces and using cookie or sandwich cutters in the shapes of animals, sports items, even butterflies, hearts, and stars. Health experts also say colorful fruit kebabs like tomato and cheese kebabs can reinforce pattern making. And if you got a little spare time, consider writing kids fun notes. When lunch is fun, kids will look forward to it. Erica Hernandez, Case at 12 News. I love making faces with the food. It, it works every time. It does it? Yeah. Success. <laughs> 513, 75 degrees. And still ahead, we'll tell you how you can get a free pack of McDonald's brand new spicy chicken nuggets today only. And next, to look at five new colors you can choose from if you plan on getting the new iPad Air. Here's to the doers. To all the people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In today's Tech Bytes, Duncan makes a deal. The company has settled a lawsuit with New York stemming from a 2015 data breach. The suit claimed Duncan failed to notify customers about the breach and failed to investigate it. The settlement calls for about 20,000 Duncan customers to receive a refund. Apple has unveiled two new watches. The more expensive one includes enhanced health features, including the ability to track your blood oxygen level. Another feature of the watch is automatic hand washing detection, which recognizes the motion of hand washing, then encourages you to watch for the recommended 20 seconds. And Apple is brightening up its new line of iPads. The latest iPad Air will come in five colors, including green and sky blue. The home button is gone, but there's a touch ID sensor on the top to unlock the screen. I wonder if I can get it in ruby, indigo, or snow. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 517 Red Lobster getting a new kind of margarita, and there's a lot of buzz about it. And McDonald's is offering a deal on spicy chicken nuggets. Our Sarah Costa joins us live for a look at this morning's consumer stories. Good morning. I heard somebody in the newsroom talking about this new margarita. I mean, it ha has Mountain Dew in it. That Mountain Dew, it tequila. Was you. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you shake a bottle, it might go. But, oh my gosh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of it's yeah. just a lot of it's a lot going on. It's a lot yeah. to so take let's, in. Let's yeah. talk about it. So Mountain Dew, that's probably not the first beverage that comes to mind when you think of what makes a good mixer or something that should be paired with a meal. But Red Lobster wants to change that. Take a look at that. Meet the Dew Garita. Yes, it's a new margarita made with Mountain Dew. It's part of the restaurant chain's new partnership with PepsiCo. So what exactly is in a Dew Garita? We know it at least has Mountain Dew and tequila, right? But Red Lobster isn't giving out the exact recipe, whatever's in it. Red Lobster says the new cocktail pairs beautifully with its Cheddar Bay biscuits. So fancy. Well, McDonald's thinks you'll like its new spicy chicken McNuggets. So much so Ronald and the gang have you covered even if you don't. Today, anyone who buys a six pack of the new nuggets gets a second six pack free. The spicy nuggets are breaded with a tempura coating infused with cayenne and chili peppers. Though there have been plenty of dipping sauces over the past years, this is the first time the restaurant has flavored the nuggets themselves since they were introduced in 1983. The BOGO deal is only good today, and you have to order through the McDonald's app. Lots of new spicy foods to try, guys. Interesting. I wonder if it's going to, you know, 
battle off with some of the other restaurants, spicy mm -hmm. nuggets or a, a new nugget war has yeah. begun. And yeah, that seems to be the catch. They really want you to do things through their app. They're trying to up their traffic a little bit. That's sneaky, mm -hmm. sneaky, sneaky. Just about 520. Let's check traffic right now with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, right now, as you take a look at the map, you can see not too much going on out there. The uh, map void of any incident. So that's the great news as we move over to Transguide. This is I-10 at the Y. Not a whole lot there. Traffic moving along fairly well on these dry roads this morning. No problems there. 410 at Northwest Military Highway. And then taking a look at that construction, I-10 and Dominion. It almost looks as if maybe they plan on wrapping it up a little bit early. So we can just hope. I-10 at Hoyerman Road. That's a great shot there of uh, three lanes with that uh, turn only signal. And then <laughs> as, we, as we move, I got to get them some kind of credit. And then 37 at Hackberry. <coughs> you can see north and south on lanes have more than enough room out there. As some right right now, there's somewhere. a couple more arrows. Right? There's two a, arrows. There's in case a, you missed them, here's two there, more. There's arrows. a person yeah. with a joystick going. We're trying. Marcus. <laughs> well, in their defense, there's some minute. new computer systems over there. They're making some changes, so Got they're it. working out the bugs, and we know about that. Those folks have always done a fantastic. When there's they have stuff, and they're watching you speak, and they move their cameras mm -hmm. for us and everything like that. So yeah, thanks very much for that. So, so is that the moon behind you, Mike, or a big that's smile, or both? Face. Yeah, that's the moon. Which is great because, I mean, obviously it doesn't get much of a, much more of a sliver than that because the, the new moon is actually tomorrow, so it's just barely the, the waning crescent moon, but it does look like it is smiling out there. What a great shot. Thank you very much. All right, um, I would like to look at the lights here in this picture and a little bit of a fuzz. So we do have some humidity out there. It's not ridiculously high, but enough to notice it. And the humidity will drop down somewhat this afternoon, but not a heck of a lot. I mean, we'll still have these dew points in the low to mid 60s, so we'll still have somewhat of a, uh, a heat index to deal with. I'm going for temperatures in the upper 80s later on today, but the heat index is going to be right around the, say, low 90s. And as far as uh, rain chances, there's nothing out there really right now. But throughout the afternoon, we're going to see more of these showers developing around here. And the rain chances pretty much exist all around the area. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be raining constantly for everybody, but there is going to be about a 40% shot for some rain. And then we go into tomorrow morning. Yes, things will be dying down a little bit, but we'll still have some around. And then throughout the afternoon, those rain chances are going to come back up, even a couple of thunderstorms around the area tomorrow afternoon and lingering into Friday. Then they'll start to uh, drop down after that. So as far as the uh, satellite picture, we had a couple of showers that uh, tried to pop up along the coastal plain yesterday. Otherwise, there wasn't much going on. And speaking about not much going on, this notwithstanding, and yes, the eye wall has just moved on shore right around the northern eye wall, right around Pensacola, Florida. So as technically it has barely made landfall, the center, the exact center of that is still just offshore, but with the eye wall moving on shore, that will continue up to the northeast. But otherwise, I mean, there is just not anything going on. So here's what happens over the next couple of days. The hurricane moves off into southeast United States, sort of dissipates a little bit. The high is dominating. However, we have this bit of a kind of a disturbance, a little bit of a trough, which is sitting on top of us. That's what's going to give us rain chances today and then especially tomorrow. Friday, yes, but it will start to get pushed on out of here by Friday. Then that high moves on in here. That's what's in store for the weekend. We will have a bit of a northeasterly flow, so it's going to keep uh, humidity in check over the weekend. Uh, we'll have plenty of sunshine around here. Good looking temperatures will be right about normal, upper 80s, close to 90. That'll be the situation in the first part of next week. So we got a nice sunny dry spell coming on in here. Hopefully we get some rain the next couple of days. Then going into late next week, it looks like another one of these troughs is going to be trying to move on in here, perhaps give us another shot at some rain. However, one thing, there is no fall weather in this forecast when you've got these upper level wind lines going straight across west to east up there. That keeps all the the good cool fall temperatures well up there in the northern U.S. and up around uh, Canada. 85 degrees today, partly sunny skies at noon and then a high temperature today going for 89. Couple of scattered showers, a uh, thunderstorm or two here and there. About a 40% chance for some rain today. Then we go into the next couple of days and rain chances actually will go up somewhat going into tomorrow. Friday, we'll still have a couple of scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms around here and then plenty of sunshine. Going into the rest of the week, or go, rest of the weekend, pardon me, and the first of next week. Yeah, we're asking folks to go ahead and, if you can, did my microphone just die now? Oh, What's no. Sounds, it sounds wah, like wah, wah. Keep talking. <laughs> talk Mike, talk check, loud check, here. Check. No? Talk loud. Right. Oh, I was just going to say, time to make plans this weekend. Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful yeah. weekend. I'm happy about that. Aw, just let's, let's throw it across mm. the room. Oh,
<laughs> and to mark the first ever release of Full Metal Jacket on 4K Ultra HD, a first look at an immersive behind the scenes app that fans can access for a limited time. I said the whole world about to testify and the table's about to Janelle Monet is working to turn out the vote. Here's a look at the artist's new song and video, Turntables. The song is featured in the voter advocacy documentary, All In, The Fight for Democracy, which debuts on Prime Video Friday. If I'm going to do a film like this, the only way I can do it is to add humor. Taika Waititi is hitting the high seas. The Oscar-winning filmmaker has boarded the HBO Max comedy, Our Flag Means Death, about a real-life 18th century aristocrat who chucked his pampered life and became a pirate. Waititi will be an executive producer on the series and direct the pilot after he finishes filming the Marvel movie Thor Love and Thunder. Observational diary. Subject, playing versus being. When Matthew Modine was making the iconic war film Full Metal Jacket, he kept a diary and took lots of photographs. He used them to develop his award-winning iPad app, Full Metal Jacket Diary. Now, to mark the movie's first ever release on 4K Ultra HD, Modine is making his immersive, behind-the-scenes app free to fans for a limited time. The film hits Blu-ray September 22nd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's one messed up war movie, but it is amazing. Yeah, and this will definitely be interesting to look at. I didn't even know he put that together. I didn't either. Going to have to check out that new content. 528, 75 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, the latest on the search for a suspect who ambushed two L.A. County deputies. And a closer look at what city leaders are doing in regards to the future of transportation here in San Antonio. Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 16th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a great week, but we're also looking forward to a beautiful weekend. We are, and it's going to be fantastic. In the meantime, Mike says there is a chance at a shower or storm in our forecast. Yes, hopefully the next couple of days we do get some rain because then after that, a uh, beautiful weekend, but it's going to be a pretty long dry period and we have more on that in just a minute. Uh, first of all, as far as the hurricane is concerned, Sally, it just made landfall. The eye wall moved right across uh, land there about Pensacola just about a half an hour, 45 minutes ago. It's a category two storm that was defying what the forecast even was late yesterday because it has just been sitting out there in the water, just bathing in that very warm water. So it has gained a lot of strength. It will continue to move up to the northeast. And by the way, that was that's just the enhanced clouds to show the, the kind of the size of this hurricane. It's going to move uh, through the panhandle of Florida. Obviously, the path had changed quite a bit, so there was a lot of worry around uh, New Orleans early Earlier, but now it's just going to be dumping a whole bunch of rain. And the problem being it's such a slow mover, they're looking at a couple of feet or even more than that of rain, and it will move into the uh, southeastern United States. Around here, ragweed, fall elm on the moderate side, mold is low, and throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up into, we're in the mid 70s right now, mid to upper 80s uh, by noon, early afternoon, top off at 89 degrees, about a 40% chance for some uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here later on today. And that rain chance actually goes goes up slightly going into tomorrow. More on that and a closer look at that good looking weekend. Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo and what's going on? Anything big? No, things still look pretty good out there, Mike, as we take a look at a couple more trans guide cameras. You can see there Highway 90 at Callahan. Uh, so far, traffic move along fairly well. No problems there. Highway 151 at 410 and then 1604 Bandera looking great. I-10 and medical, slight increases in the traffic. However, no delays in anyone's travel times right now. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Police are hoping to get some answers out of a man who they believe opened fire at a southeast side apartment complex, killing one person and wounding another who was asleep in bed. They also have an active investigation going on in the 4600 block of Pecan Valley Road. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand officers just happened to be in the area at the time of the shooting. Well, that's right. They were probably about 100 yards away from where they actually caught this suspect. That is how they were able to make this quick arrest. Police sitting there at a gas station when they heard the gunshots ring out. Now, they uh, arrested the suspect right down here by this apartment building. These are the Pecan Valley apartments. You can see we have uh, crime scene investigators taking photos, detectives also milling about. Uh, police found the weapon 
right down where that crime scene investigator is standing taking photos. Uh, that's also where they found the suspect. That They say that they believe the suspect had invol been involved in some sort of a fight here at this apartment complex prior to the shooting. They say he came back, they believe, dressed in some sort of bulletproof vest with this weapon and opened fire. Now, a man in his 40s who happened to be standing outside was shot and killed. Police are not sure if he was the intended target or just someone caught in that gunfire. Another person who was asleep inside an apartment also was hit in the backside. He was taken to the hospital. But again, a fatal shooting here for a man in his 40s. Police do have that suspect downtown. They're collecting evidence here and also, again, hoping to get answers from that suspect in custody. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Tomorrow, the San Antonio City Council will vote whether to put another $21.9 million toward the city's COVID-19 emergency housing assistance program. It's an effort to make sure families can keep a roof over their heads during the pandemic. The council is also proposing some changes. Instead of a three month or $5,000 limit on assistance, applicants would only get a little more than one month's worth of funding. Eighty morning headlines, a reward of $275,000 being offered for information about the shooter who opened fire on two Los Angeles County deputies this past weekend. As authorities search for that shooter, the two deputies are expected to survive in what officials are calling a miracle. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Bravery under fire. Video shows a female Los Angeles County deputy applying a tourniquet to her partner shortly after the two were ambushed and shot several times Saturday by a lone gunman. There is no place in our society for the violence that we saw. Um, you know, blessed be the peacekeepers. The deputies were both in intensive care Tuesday after suffering wounds to their heads and arms. There's definitely going to be a, a very painful path for them, but thankfully no vital organs and so their prognosis is good. As the deputies are hospitalized, one local activist voicing support for the act of violence. This right here lightens my heart, right? Because, you know, the sheriff department has murdered too many of our brothers and sisters. This is a start of retribution then I think this is a very good start. That's a stance denounced by officials. There is no excuse for that. There is no excuse for the violence against the officers, period. We have bad apples in every organization, just as we do in law enforcement. We hold them accountable. I'm not going to tolerate anybody crossing the line. But at the same time, I'm not going to throw out the overwhelming majority of deputies are doing the right thing for the right reason. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Some scary moments caught on camera of two window washers in New York. The scaffolding they were standing on gave out, leaving them dangling from the building. Video shows firefighters performing the high angle rescue that was yesterday. A man was stuck on a window ledge while a woman was stuck on the collapsed scaffolding. Witnesses say both workers held on to their safety ropes for several minutes until help arrived. Fire officials say the two workers were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Historical items from President Abe Lincoln have sold at auction for $81,000. They include a two-inch lock of hair and a telegram smeared with his blood. The auction organizers verified authenticity and found that Lincoln's hair was clipped during a post-mortem exam the day after he was assassinated, April 14th of 1865. A cousin of First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln had wrapped it in a War Department telegram from the night he was shot. More Lincoln memorabilia is up for auction through October 7th, including two documents signed by the late president. More people are heading outdoors amid the pandemic here at home. The San Antonio Botanical Garden has a new exhibit to welcome guests this weekend. It will feature the art of origami. As part of Saturday's opening, there will be an array of activities and food for families. We have all the details online at kset.com. Just visit the homepage. 538, 75 degrees. And over the past several years, there have been efforts to expand transportation offerings in San Antonio. Not all of these efforts have been successful. Just ahead, what city leaders are doing to keep us moving. And next we'll tell you about how San Antonio taxpayers left jobless by the pandemic can apply to get trained for an entirely new career. And taking a look outside with live cam, if you didn't get rain yesterday, you might get rain today or maybe tomorrow. We're going to check in with Mike. We'll be right back. 541 San Antonio taxpayers left jobless by the pandemic have a few more options this morning when it comes to finding a new job. Those that need a new job can now apply to train in a new career in construction, healthcare, or bioscience, among other 
fields. It's part of the COVID-19 Workforce Recovery Program in which those eligible can earn up to $450 a week while training. Workforce Solutions Alamo, Alamo Colleges, Project Quest, and other agencies are partnering with the city. The program is part of that recovery and resilience plan approved by the council in June. Funding is made possible through the CARES Act and the city's general fund. The goal is geared towards those hit the hardest in the food service, hospitality, and retail industries. There are jobs already waiting to be filled. We need to make sure that we're focusing uh, residents to, to participate in the training for the jobs that we know are going to be there um, and that are currently there right now. So far we have um, you know, a few uh, employers that are offering up uh, practically about 200 pl uh, plus positions that uh, they're working closely with us and either offering on the job opportunities or work experience. The training starts at the end of the month. There's been a lot of interest in the program and it's tied up the phone lines at Workforce Solutions Alamo. But they say a new system will fix the issue. The county is also offering training through a similar program. We have information about this on KSET.com. Guess what, Steph? What? 543. 75 degrees. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> The time is right. Up next, we're taking a look at what transportation options San Antonio has now and how we'll be getting to our destinations in the near future. And welcome back. It's 545. This week, our in-depth digital program, Case That Explains, is taking a look at current transportation options in San Antonio, the road we've traveled so far, and where we still need to go to keep us moving. This morning, RJ Marquez gives us a preview of the episode by giving us a look at how trans mass transit began here in our city. Streetcars pulled by horses and mules. This was the start of public transportation in San Antonio. In 1878, the San Antonio Street Railway Company created the first horse-drawn streetcar service. The arrival of streetcars in 1878 was entirely transformative. Journeys to San Pedro Park from downtown took two hours, and now they only took one hour. San Pedro Avenue became a major road and downtown streets were transformed. Soon, streetcar service grew and spread to areas outside of downtown. It had this enormous effect of changing the value of the land. People wanted to be near the streetcars, so that land became valuable. Electric streetcars with overhead power lines hit the roads in the 1890s, but they began to decline in popularity after the 1920s. San Antonio became the first major city to abandon streetcars in 1933. Being on a San Antonio streetcar was very much like being a sardine in a can and the oil was sweat. Streetcars also had a bad habit of breaking down, and when they broke down, you were stuck in the middle of the street and nobody could get past you. By the 1940s, buses were the preferred way to get around town. The peak of bus service in San Antonio was during World War II. San Antonio set an example for other big cities. San Antonio was also the first city to have air conditioning buses. In 1959, the city bought the transit company and formed the San Antonio Transit System. That existed until 1977 when voters approved a half-cent sales tax to establish VIA Metropolitan Transit. VIA buses hit the road in 1978, exactly 100 years after horses pulled streetcars. San Antonio, we like to think of it as being kind of sleepy and slow. San Antonio has actually been cutting edge uh, at the front end of all this stuff um, for a very long time. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And case that explains transportation in San Antonio part one will be available to stream on demand tomorrow. You can watch it on the KSET TV app on Roku, Fire Stick, or most other smart TV devices. I think I was living here in San Antonio. My dad was in the Air Force when VIA rolled out. And do you remember the Buppets, the, yes! the, the bus Muppets? They still have them. They were them. featured in the commercials. I, I remember those. They, they still have them like in a glass case at VIA. There right you now. go. Mm -hmm. If I remember the jingle was VIA, 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 VIA. VIA. Yeah. It's the way to go or something <laughs> like that. For years. Yeah. <laughs> Little history lesson there yeah. for just about everybody. 548, 75 degrees. How is traffic looking right now, Officer Marcus Trujillo? No buppets out there. No bu <laughs> no buppets, muppets, or any other, but I do remember those. As we uh, take a look at the roadway, still no accidents right now, so that's the great news. Still have some construction there. I-10 at the rims. Use caution out there. It starts out there by Dominion blading everybody off onto the access road. Here shortly, they should be picking up those construction barrels and everybody can use the main lanes once again. I-10 there at the Y. No problems in 410 at Northwest Military Highway. Traffic still moving great right now.
Good news. Mike Oesterhage. Pet nice time. Shot. Pet uh -oh. time. Pet time. Oh, pet okay. time. Tell pet us time. about some pets. <laughs> yes, we've got to tell you about pets. Uh, they are looking for homes. Aww. Look at all. Oh. This is Mari, five year old Chihuahua pug mix. What a combination. Great face. Fun loving girl. Loves to snuggle and loves to eat. Of course, don't we all? Looking for an active home. It's going to take her on nice walks. Xena is a super adventure. Get right in your face like that. She's about two years old. As half uh, terrier, American uh, pit bull mix. She loves meeting new people and look at Philip. It's a great name for a cat. Just head scratches, sunbathing. He's turning one next month. Look at those eyes Aww. on that cat. Gorgeous. Okay. He wants to celebrate. The kitty does. He celebrates his first birthday in a forever home. For more information, <laughs> please visit sahumane.org. 4804 Fredericksburg Road. 226-7461 for more information. All those pets out there looking for homes. You just get that face full of, of dogs. So, all right, remember this picture from a couple of days ago? Yep. And we were saying it looks like it was Photoshopped, something like that. No, got an email from the photographer and said it was a really, really long exposure. And that's why more colors in the foreground like that. So, because uh, all that light behind it is so backlit that mm -hmm. you tend to think that the windmill would be darker. Right. But, uh, and not being a photographer, however, he explained it. So just wanted to point that out. Gorgeous picture. You may have to put nice. that one in the uh, KSAT Connect Hall of Fame. I think so. Yeah, it is a really nice picture. Yeah, yes. uh, Marcus was saying very nice picture. So again, thank you very much for that. And thank you for the, uh, the email explaining how you did that. All right, we got a little bit of a fuzz out there, which I was kind of look at that. And you can almost tell what the humidity is like just by looking at that picture. We're at 75 degrees right now, 71 Bulverde, some 60s in parts of the hill country. Now looking at these numbers, dew point temperatures, of course, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. You get above 60, you can sort of feel the humidity. So we've got some mid upper 60s, even low 70s. You know, it's not like it was, and I keep comparing to a few weeks ago when we had those, remember it was steam bath out there, mid and upper 70s. So there's enough humidity, kind of notice it, but not enough to really make it feel that much hotter than what it actually is. So we've got uh, heat index readings, basically, the same temperature within a degree or so of the actual air temperature. So it's not like getting slapped in the face with a wet towel when you step outside, anything like that. We do have the nice thing with some of this humidity around here, enough moisture to get squeezed out with some of these uh, showers that are going to be developing. So even by later on this morning, maybe a couple of them developing here along the, the coast, along the coastal plain, pardon me. And then as the afternoon rolls on, we begin to heat up a little bit more. We'll start to see more of these kind of popping up around the area. Some scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms are possible thrown in in through the late afternoon and then right around uh, early evening dinner time. And then once the sun starts to get a little bit lower, some of these are going to be dying down, but there may still actually be a couple of them left over even on into the evening hours, just sort of scattered about. And as a matter of fact, this computer model does have a few of those even into the late evening hours. So it's it's not as though it's just going to be completely cut off once the sun goes down as far as any uh, rain chances. Now, as far as the better rain chances, we've got this disturbance kind of hanging around here, and that's going to sort of stay in place for the next couple of days. And that will enhance the rain by tomorrow as well as Friday, probably first part of the day. Then that high is going to start to move on in here and that's going to kind of shut things off. So yes, we do have a great looking weekend in store. Uh, temperatures are not going to be outrageous. As a matter of fact, they're going to be held to about normals over the weekend. Humidity should be just a little bit lower too. So great last uh, official last weekend of summer today, 85 degrees at noon, partly sunny skies. And then we will have uh, about a 40% chance for a couple of scattered showers, maybe a storm or two around here. I'm going to go for 89. I'm kind of banking on a few more clouds hanging around here to keep temperatures just below 90. We'll be a lot of folks will be averaging about 90 today. 50% uh, chance tomorrow. So I think rain chances go up just a little bit tomorrow. We'll still have some rain around, especially the first part of the day on Friday. And yeah, good looking weekends. You know, temperatures about normal. I think we start to warm up a little bit, though, going into the first day of fall on Tuesday, although about a normal high. Well, maybe it'll feel like fall later, later. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> Mike's like, that's what the month of November is for. <laughs> Although I swear every time I put my Christmas decorations up in November, it's hot and humid. Well, well then don't do that. <laughs>
<laughs> put it off a Yeah, what are you? It hurts when I do this. Don't do that. Uh, I know. I should have been a doctor. What should I do? Put them up now? You know? yeah. yeah, sure. Why not? 554, 75 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three. We have 842, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 7170, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 3, 6, 12, 16, 32. And Mega 25, 28, 38, 59, 62, Mega Ball 22 power, rather Mega Plier 4. By the way, Powerball jackpot up to $94 million for tonight's drawing. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, get ready for launch in this week's Katie Science Lab. Katie Blake teaches us how to make rockets out of film canisters. Here's what you're going to need. If you can find them, empty film canisters or small pill bottles will work. Water and Alka-Seltzer. Tune in at 9 to see how all this comes together. Well, as parents, many of us often worry for raising our kids the right way. Still ahead in the next hour, GMSA, we have some simple ways to help you raise them into upstanding adults without falling into the trap of them of trying to be the perfect parent. And Trans Sky, there's I-10 at Colorado, and then up the road at Wurzbach. Marcus will have an update, and Mike's forecast. Wait to see the weekend. It's going to be a beaut. Police say a man with a bulletproof vest and a rifle took out his anger here at the Southeast Side apartment complex, killing one other man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Hurricane Sally made landfall in Alabama about an hour ago or near Alabama. Mike's been tracking the storm this morning. Have the latest on the path. And taking a look outside with live cam, a warm 75 degrees for the most part, but we are expecting rain. We're gonna check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is September 16th. Thanks for starting your morning with us, and we hope you're having a great week so far. And we are expecting rain, so we're excited about that. There is a chance. Mike's joining us now. You've also been keeping tabs on a very slow-moving Sally overnight. Unbelievable. This thing was was moving slower than a person yeah. simply walks down the street. Yeah, uh, people walk about three miles per hour on average, normal gait. This thing's been going about two. So it was sitting out there and it defied all the forecasts yesterday too, because it looked like it was going to be staying in category one storm and now it, it strengthened. And so. did you say landfall near Pensacola, Florida? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it moved east because, you know, the, initially it looked like it was heading in toward uh, New Orleans, going to make a, a almost a direct hit there, but the path has definitely moved. So yeah, just about uh, time is six o'clock. So it was about uh, five o'clock, uh, 430 that the eye wall just moved on to land right there, just uh, right around Pensacola, maybe to the west of there ever so slightly. Now, this is not a radar image. This is just the enhanced clouds, and you can see where the, the center of circulation is, obviously. And this is a good example of, you know, we always say the right-hand storm in relation to the direction of travel is where the most rain is, the most uh, storm surge, and because you have those counterclockwise winds, and that's kind of pulling it. So look at how this is not completely symmetrical. There's a lot more going on off to the east of it, and this is where a lot of the heavier rain is. But yeah, it is a Category 2 storm as of right now, and it's going to continue to work its way across the uh, Florida Panhandle. It's getting, uh, doing a number on uh, Mobile Bay as well there in Alabama, and then working its way off to the uh, throughout the, the southeast United States, so a big rain producer there. And as far as rain, yes, we do have some rain chances around here that are going to be developing. There's not anything being picked up on radar as of right now. Ragweed, fall elm, both moderate. Mold is on the low side and temperatures throughout the day. We're going to be right around, uh, say, uh, mid 70s this morning, lower 70s, maybe dropping down a couple of more degrees and then rain chances will start to pick up throughout the rest of the afternoon, especially later on in the afternoon. And we are going to be seeing temperatures. I'm going for highs uh, getting up into about the mid, maybe uh, upper 80s later on today because I think some of the clouds are going to help to keep temperatures down somewhat throughout the, uh, the rest of today and then improving rain chances the next couple of days. Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now and all of our Great guys in guys, guys and gals in blue, I should say, and our favorite. Right? Well, thank you, Mike. And uh, things look pretty good out there. So I have great news. Yes. No act. No, uh, no delays right now. Traffic move along fairly well. Let's take a look at one of the trans guy cameras out there and show you 1604 at Spurs Ranch Road there. So you see very, very green grass, very dry roads and uh, traffic both directions still running smoothly. Currently no delays in anyone's travel times.
Mark and Stephanie. And certainly well lit out there in that trans guide camera. Thank you very much, Marcus. Well, police say a man used a rifle to end a fight at a southeast side apartment complex. They say he opened fire in the 4600 block of Pecan Valley Road, killing one man and wounding another in his sleep. Our Katrina Weber live there with the latest. Katrina, we know at least one of the victims seemed to be an innocent bystander. Do officers believe the other was the intended target? Well, that's what they're still trying to figure out. They are questioning the suspect in this whole thing. They don't know if the man who was shot and killed was uh, involved in this somehow or if he just happened to be standing outside. The other man who was sleeping in his bed, police say, was an innocent bystander. Now, if you look behind me, you'll notice that all the officers we saw out here earlier seem to have disappeared uh, behind the, this building that we're looking at. There's just one officer there, and he's keeping an eye on the gun, that, on the rifle that police have recovered that they believe was used in the shooting. I want to give you a look at the video so you can see police uh, collecting some of the evidence that they found here as well, some of the shell casings. Now, they say that officers happen to be in the area, really just less than 100 yards away from here. When they heard those shots ring out just before 4 o'clock this morning, they rushed over here. They found a man crouching down, wearing a bulletproof vest of some sort and holding the rifle. They believe he was the shooter. They took him into custody. They found a man down on the sidewalk, another man in his 40s, down dead from gunshot wounds, and then later found out that someone in an apartment also had been shot. Uh, police believe that, again, that bullet was a stray bullet that hit him while he was in bed. They're trying to figure out if the man who was killed was involved in an earlier incident. They believe the shooter had been involved in some sort of fight here and then came back dressed uh, in that bulletproof vest and also armed with the rifle and then started firing. So they, again, don't know if the man who was killed was involved in that fight or if he happened to also just be in the wrong place at the wrong time and was hit by the gunfire. But all those questions they do hope to answer as they question the suspect. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We are also following late breaking news on the west side where fire crews are on the scene in the 200 block of Friedel Street. That's near old Highway 90 in West Commerce. Sarah Costa live on the scene with more. Sarah. Good morning. We're still waiting for official information from the San Antonio Fire Department, but for the most part, this fire, they're in the mop up stage. As you can see behind me, this is a single residence. And what we know so far after talking to family members of the owners of the house, everyone got out safely. Now, one of the brothers had just left to go get food. That's what the family was telling us. And there was another brother inside still sleeping. Neighbors were the ones that actually woke up that other brother that was sleeping and helped him get out of the house because they saw smoke coming out of it. Firefighters got here and were quickly able to knock down that fire. According to the relatives of the homeowners, they said that after the neighbors got out, one of the one of their brothers safely, uh, firefighters quickly knocked out a fire that was mainly located in the back of the home. They don't know if it was due to faulty wiring or at this time, they're trying to figure out the cause. I saw some firefighters going in, you know, just checking out some hot spots. For the most part, they are in the mop up stages. A lot of units were called out here at one point, 11 units, this whole street of Fridell Street and North Northwest 36th Street that runs uh, right next to it, intersects with it, is still blocked off by police for all these units trying to squeeze into this pretty narrow street here. But just stay with us here on GMSA and we'll bring you updates as this story develops throughout the morning. Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. State Representative Ray Lopez of San Antonio underwent heart surgery yesterday after suffering a heart attack on Sunday. He is resting and recovering at University Hospital this morning after doctors told his family that the representative's surgery had gone well. Representative Lopez is expected to, to be discharged from the hospital in the next few days with some additional recovery time at home. Lopez was elected in 2019 and represents House District 25, which encompasses most of San Antonio's west and northwest sides. Local health officials reporting three new deaths and 115 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. In last night's update, Mayor Ron Nierenberg says the seven-day rolling average now at 117 cases a day. The school risk currently at moderate as schools continue to open up to in-person learning.
Tomorrow, the San Antonio City Council will vote whether to put another $21.9 million towards the city's COVID-19 emergency housing assistance program. It's an effort to make sure families can keep a roof over their heads during the pandemic. The council is also proposing some changes. Instead of a three-month or $5,000 limit on assistance, applicants would only get a little more than one month's worth of funding. County managed to adopt a budget that's $5 million less than last year's budget, but more than a million dollars was allocated for the county budget for a mental health response plan. The Office of Criminal Justice set to contract with the South Texas Regional Advisory Council to make it happen. This would set up a process to determine who to send when a mental health 911 call comes in. And today on GMS 89, City Hall reporter Garrett Berger will join us live to talk about what we can expect in the upcoming budget. Other headlines this morning, Yoshidi Suge will become in, sworn in as Japan's new prime minister today. Both houses of parliament approved the former chief cabinet secretary and close aide to Shinzo Abe a short time ago. Abe stepped down from his position, position rather, citing health concerns as the reason. He says he will support his predecessor as a lawmaker. A new study has found that people who experience post-traumatic stress disorder may be twice as likely to have dementia later in life. Those findings, including people in the general population who had PTSD from abuse, car accidents, terrorism, or other traumas. Veterans with PTSD were one and a half times more likely to develop dementia than vets without the disorder. The study looked at data on nearly 17 million people from 13 studies across four continents. The authors say the study proves PTSD can have long-term consequences, but it's still underdiagnosed and undertreated. U.S. Transportation Committee, or rather House Transportation Committee, says the Boeing 737 MAX jet crashes were caused by failed government oversight, design flaws, and a lack of action by the company despite knowing problems. Findings come from the congressional investigation out publicly today. The company says the, uh, the committee says that the company followed FAA, FAA safety regulations even though the planes crashed in Ethiopia and Indonesia, killing a total of 346 people. Of course, the company we're referring to is Boeing. Mexico is celebrating its Independence Day today, but for the first time in more than 150 years, there was no crowd. Mexico City's main square was empty due to COVID-19 restrictions, and the traditional El Grito ceremony was held at the National Palace and transmitted live. In addition to paying tribute to independence heroes, this year's ceremony honored the more than 71,000 Mexicans who have died since the coronavirus pandemic began. 611, 75 degrees. And making lunches every day for yourself and your student can feel monotonous, but it doesn't have to be. After the break, we're going to learn ways to keep lunches exciting and healthy. Outside with Live Cam, we are excited about an increased chance of rain. This isn't an all day thing, as Mike says, but we could see a scattered shower or thunderstorm here or there. How many days could that happen? We'll have the details coming up. Just Making lunch at home is a great way to teach your kids about different foods. Here are some tips for some simple and tasty lunches for this unconventional school year. First off, plan your lunches ahead of time. According to CNN, one pediatric dietitian says during this time of uncertainty, planning meals can help establish a sense of normalcy for kids, not to mention preparing the lunch just as if you would pack it for school will help prevent your children from mindless eating and wandering to the kitchen. Second, keep it simple. Target four items in lunch, a protein, a fruit or vegetable, whole grains, and a dairy food such as cheese, yogurt, or milk. Next, involve your kids in lunch prep. Children are more likely to eat nutritious meals if they play a role in creating them. When planning, allow your kids to suggest ideas and shop for foods, even if you are purchasing foods online. For something quick and easy, consider making lunch foods in advance and freeze them. Some ideas include homemade burritos, grilled sandwiches, soups, or stews. Finally, make it fun. Try making food faces and using cookie or sandwich cutters in the shapes of animals, sports items, even butterflies, hearts, and stars. Health experts also say colorful fruit kebabs like tomato and cheese kebabs can reinforce pattern making. And if you got a little spare time, consider writing kids fun notes. When lunch is fun, kids will look forward to it. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Right now, time check 616. 
Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. I know it looked pretty good earlier. Still looking great right now, Stephanie. As we take a look at a couple of TransGuide cameras, uh, we're seeing traffic move uh, freely right now. No issues, no delays. 37 at Hackberry North and South Pond Lanes running smoothly. No problems on the outer loop. 604 out there at Spurs Ranch Road. And then I-10 at the rim, that uh, construction. Looks like uh, everything's wrapping up and the uh, traffic is continuing on. They're getting ready to move up those uh, move off those uh, barrels there from 10 at Dominion. And then here in the downtown area, 10 at the Y, no issues there. Thank you, Marcus. We may not have a full fleet of buses running this year, but we still <laughs> yeah, have a bus stop forecast. Yeah. We still have the one here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that we, it's going again. So, and there it is. Oh, wait, I got to go that way. That Sorry, way. Go. Yeah. It's always backwards when I'm looking at that camera. Uh, 74 <laughs> this morning, we will drop down a degree or two from where we are right now. Partly cloudy skies. Yes, there's some humidity out there, but it's not just outrageously, outrageously humid at all. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to be up to 89 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. Couple of scattered showers, a um, few thunderstorms here and there, about a 40% chance for some rain today. So again, a decent shot at some rain. Beautiful view. I love this picture just as the sun was just right there at the horizon. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, this shot is pretty good. Uh, not crystal clear lights. And now it seems to be our, our little measuring stick, visible measuring stick, if you will, as far as the uh, humidity. High temperatures yesterday, we did creep up to 92 degrees. The normal high is right around 90, so just a bit above that. Now, today I'm going for 89 for a high temperature here in town. We'll be averaging most areas about 90 or so, maybe a couple of uh, spots, and, and this is very dependent upon cloud cover as well. I think we're going to keep enough clouds around to keep us a mm, little bit lower than yesterday. However, heat index readings are going to be up into the low 90s again today because even though there's not much of a heat index if at all right now we still have some humidity it'll drop down a little bit this afternoon but just enough out there to add that little extra to some of the temperatures as far as rain there's not anything on radar right now, but we do have uh, some of the showers that are going to be developing. And even as we go into the early afternoon hours, we'll start to see more of these kind of popping up around here with the afternoon heating. A few thunderstorms could see a couple of decent downpours here and there. That's something uh, in places may have to watch out for. It's not going to be any widespread heavy rain, but just again, a couple of good downpours. And that's going to be the case going on into this evening as well. Most of the time, and this will be the situation today as well, once the sun goes down, things will start to diminish, but we will still have a few of these showers hanging around here even on into the uh, evening hours tonight. So it's not like it's just going to completely shut things off once the sun goes down and then we'll have another decent chance or actually a little bit better chance for some rain tomorrow around the country with notwithstanding the Hurricane Sally, which has just made land and it's going to continue to work its way just right on through, say, Alabama, Georgia into South Carolina. Uh, there's not really a heck of a lot going on around here. We have high pressure, which is dominating things most of all. There's the hurricane. And then right here, we've got this kind of a, a wave in the atmosphere. Um, just to think of it as a little glitch, a weakness, and that's what's going to help with the rain chances today, tomorrow, and then into basically the first part of the day, Friday. Then the high is going to build back in here, shuts that off, and we've got a pretty good looking weekend. Upper 80s, close to normal. Humidity is going to be held in check as well. And then even going into next week, not much really changes around here. We may get another one of these uh, troughs kind of developing by the latter part of next week, but most all of anything that looks like fall or really good fall air, that's staying up there to the north for the time being. And that's going in through the mid to almost latter part of next week. 85 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and then a high temperature. Like I said, I'm going for 89, kind of banking on a few more clouds around here. A few scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms, roughly 40% chance for some rain. Then we go into tomorrow and better shot at uh, some rain around here tomorrow, today, tomorrow, Friday. So at least we've got about a say close to three day window of some rain. And then after that, nothing but sunshine really in through the weekend next week. And yeah. underlined lower humidity for the weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a bit more pleasant as far as humidity in the afternoon for the weekend. So it looks like a really good weekend. Steph's going to spend the whole, whole weekend running. I am <laughs> a great opportunity. Thank you. 621, 75 degrees. And this morning, United Airlines unveiling new technology designed to kill viruses and bacteria as airlines look to attract travelers back. Find out more in today's GMA First Look.
Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. My blood pressure is borderline. I can worry about it or do something about it. New Garlic Healthy Blood Pressure Formula works safely and naturally with a custom blend of garlic, vitamins, and minerals. And it's odor-free. I'm taking charge with Garlic. It's the last days for Macy's lowest prices of the season on furniture and mattresses, like the Jolene sectional $999, the Sealy Lawson Queen mattress only $597, and the Canyon Queen bed just $339. Now through Sunday at Macy's. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love. It's staying safe. Home Instead. To us, it's personal. Honey. Honey. New NyQuil Severe Honey is maximum strength cold and flu medicine with soothing, honey-licious taste. NyQuil Honey. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, best sleep with a cold medicine. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. This morning, United is giving us an up-close look at a powerful new robot spraying a protectant intended to kill viruses and bacteria. How can you be sure it works? Well, look, th this, this is one of the reasons that we have complementary technology that we're using. Um, and the combination of this antimicrobial technology along with the disinfect disinfectant application technology that we're using, along with masks, um, all of that together provides for a really safe environment on board our aircraft. But with the mist awaiting EPA approval, some doctors would like to see more data. There should be some caution here because the studies and the information is evolving. We don't yet know how this impacts people's health. And we'll show you much more of this new technology coming up at 8 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. 626, here's some good news. We have some rock solid data to give you this morning about perfect restaurant health inspection scores here in the Alamo City area. To say congratulations to these restaurants, Taqueria Los Comales at 3018 Culebra. They made our list this week. So did Raising Cane's over at 8402 Broadway, just inside Loop 410, not too far from the airport. McDonald's at 3033 Nogalito Street. We also have Culver's at 5836 Days of Olla Road there on the northwest side. And finally, we have Morton's of Chicago, 849 East Commerce Street. If the address does not ring a bell, that is the shops at River Center. If your establishment here in San Antonio got perfect score on your latest inspection within the last 30 days, let me know about it. Send me an email at bkd at ksat.com. Steph? Thank you, Mark. Trick or treating is up in the air across the country. Some cities and counties already canceling it. And here in Bear County, still no announcement in regards to the tradition. But Hershey's wants to help out. The candy company is using a map of COVID-19 risk levels ranging from green to red to help people determine if it is safe. Both Bear County and Texas land in the orange zone, which means Halloween fans need to take additional precautions to help prevent the spread of the virus. That's according to Hershey's. Now, Hershey's Orange Zone recommends trick or treat in reverse by dressing up children in costumes and hanging out in the front yard, right in a trick or treat drive by while in costumes or to deliver that candy. Yeah, it's gonna be different this year. It will be. I saw a picture the other day, uh, somebody stairs and they already set up a tube so where they could launch candy <laughs> down the tube. <laughs> Do you see that? Down Did to where the kids too? will be walking by with their, their well, bags or buckets well, for. Well, creative. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's one way to do it, right? Yeah, so whatever works at this I point. I want to send down the bank, you know, tube thing, you know, <laughs> so like you know, where you put. You want to be the launcher? <laughs> <laughs> of course. How's that? Uh a potato launcher, some sort of slingshot at the kids. This could go wrong, guys. Well, I only need yeah. to have their bags ready. Well, I'm going to nix this right okay. now. Okay. We'll, we'll be safe. Time now is 628 and 75 degrees. Hey, we're still following a couple of breaking stories. This one on the southeast side. Katrina Weber will give us an update on a deadly shooting over on Pecan Valley. Stick around. Police say fist led to fury here on the southeast side. A man involved in a fight answers with gunfire. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. One person killed another wounded. I'll tell you more about it. 
San Antonio Fire Department cleaning up after a home on the west side caught fire early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll tell you how neighbors helped residents out of the home safely. And a peaceful look towards downtown San Antonio as our thoughts are with folks in the Panhandle of Florida and Southern Alabama. Drenching rainfall from Hurricane Sally. Mike is talking about our unrelated rainfall chances coming up right here on GMSA. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, September 16th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And yes, rain chances here, not as heavy, but at least some rain. And we should get it now because I understand after that, it's going to be pretty dry for a while, right? Yeah, we've got about a well, two and a half day window, almost three day window starting this afternoon through the next couple of days to see some rain. Yeah, and then after that, it's going to be shut off. We've got a nice stretch of weather after that, but we could use uh, some more definitely. Temperatures uh, around the area right now are fairly consistent right around mid 70s. You know, it's pleasant when you step outside. However, um, it is well above normal. I mean, we should be at 69 degrees right now here in town. So yeah, it is definitely on the warm side. Humidity is okay when you step outside as well. Ragweed fall level moderate and mold is on the low side. And uh, throughout the rest of today, again, partly cloudy, pleasant this morning. And then later on this afternoon, scattered showers with a storm or two, about a 40% chance for some rain today. High temperatures, I'm gonna hold them at 89 in town. I'm banking on a few more clouds uh, to be around here. And then tomorrow, a little bit better rain chance. Chances. We'll still keep a shot of rain in here on Friday. And then after that, yeah, then that dry period begins. It's going to be a fantastic weekend, but let's get some rain so you can go out and cut the grass this weekend. Yay. 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 <laughs> Details coming up in just a minute. <laughs> Time saver traffic right now. It's an activity. It's it's good. I kind of right? had other plans for my weekend, but that's okay. I'll just quit. <laughs> <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, we do have an accident, folks. Uh, we're moving out to 1604 on that far northwest side. We're looking at the northbound access road of 1604 between Bandair Road and Hausman, uh, right in front of an apartment complex. That's where uh, we're getting reports of a major accident. So officers are responding out there. Once again, that's the northbound access road of 1604 between Bandera and Hausman. Watch out for delays there. I-10 and medical traffic is starting to pick up in volume, both on the east and the westbound lanes, but so far, no changes in the travel times for this section of the city. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Two people simply living their lives on the southeast side are now victims of gunfire. One of those people did not survive. The shooting happened early this morning on Pecan Valley near East South Cross. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, we understand you have an update regarding the victims. Well, that's right. I was able to confirm with a source just a little while ago that both of those people who were shot were actually innocent bystanders. That includes the man who was killed. Uh, we have the medical examiner's office uh, representative here actually uh, with the body right now. This is where they found a man in his 40s dead from gunshot wounds. The police also found the shooter, the suspected shooter here. Uh, we understand, though, that there was more than one person firing a weapon here this morning. Let me give you a look at the video so you can see uh, what the scene that police found when they got here. They collected some shell casings. They also found a rifle next to the man who they say is the suspect in the shooting. This started around four o'clock this morning. Police were in the area. They heard the gunshots and rushed over here, catching the man who they say is the suspect down in a crouched position with a rifle and what appeared to be a bulletproof vest on. Uh, they say that there had been a fight here at some point before that. They believe the suspected shooter was involved in that fight, then came back dressed like that with the rifle. Uh, and again, we have uh, been told that there was an, actually an exchange of gunfire, but they say that this man who they have in custody is the one who shot and killed the man, uh, now believed to be an innocent bystander, also shot and wounded another person who was sleeping in a second floor apartment. That person was taken to a hospital with a bullet wound in his backside, and police are continuing to question the man who they have in custody. But again, they say it appears he wasn't the only one firing uh, a weapon here at this apartment complex this morning. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Two brothers without a place to live at their west side home after it caught fire this morning, and fire crews are still working to clean things up. This is happening in the 200 block of Fredell Street near Enrique Barrera Parkway. Our Sarah Costa is live at the scene. Now, Sarah, we understand you just spoke with the battalion fire chief. Good morning, yes, and he did confirm with us that the two brothers that live inside this home 
were not injured and were able to get out safely. I also spoke to one of those brothers who lives at this house. He said there was a bit of a scare earlier this morning. He said he left to go get food this morning when he came back. His house was on fire and his other brother was still asleep inside the home. Now, with the help of some neighbors, they were able to get that man out of the house safely. The home, however, firefighters say, is unlivable at this time with about $20,000 in damage after the fire started in one of the back bedrooms. Firefighters say they believe it was from too many electrical appliances plugged in, including an AC window unit. Now, several family members have showed up on scene and firefighters say they will be able to help out those two displaced brothers as they cannot be going back into their home at this time. At one point, there was 11 fire units out here because they did think that they were going to have to help rescue that man that was inside the home. When they said that they realized that the man was out safely, they were able to knock out the fire within about 20 minutes. At this time, they are just mopping up and checking on hotspots. Live from the West Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Well, whether you prefer to drive, bike, walk, or ride, mass transit is something that could affect every single one of us. This week, our in-depth digital program, KSAT Explains, is taking a look at current transportation options in San Antonio, the road we've traveled so far, and where we still need to go to keep us moving. RJ Marquez with a preview of the episode by showing us how mass transit began in the Alamo City. Streetcars pulled by horses and mules. This was the start of public transportation in San Antonio. In 1878, the San Antonio Street Railway Company created the first horse-drawn streetcar service. The arrival of streetcars in 1878 was entirely transformative. Journeys to San Pedro Park from downtown took two hours, and now they only took one hour. San Pedro Avenue became a major road and downtown streets were transformed. Soon, streetcar service grew and spread to areas outside of downtown. It had this enormous effect of changing the value of the land. People wanted to be near the streetcars, so that land became valuable. Electric streetcars with overhead power lines hit the roads in the 1890s, but they began to decline in popularity after the 1920s. San Antonio became the first major city to abandon streetcars in 1933. Being on a San Antonio streetcar was very much like being a sardine in a can and the oil was sweat. Streetcars also had a bad habit of breaking down, and when they broke down, you were stuck in the middle of the street and nobody can get past you. By the 1940s, buses were the preferred way to get around town. The peak of bus service in San Antonio was during World War II. San Antonio set an example for other big cities. San Antonio was also the first city to have air conditioning buses. In 1959, the city bought the transit company and formed the San Antonio Transit System. That existed until 1977 when voters approved a half-cent sales tax to establish VIA Metropolitan Transit. VIA buses hit the road in 1978, exactly 100 years after horses pulled streetcars. San Antonio, we like to think of it as being kind of sleepy and slow. San Antonio has actually been cutting edge uh, at the front end of all this stuff um, for a very long time. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. And Case It Explains, Transportation in San Antonio Part 1 will be available to stream on demand tomorrow. You can watch it on the Case It TV app on Roku, Fire Stick, or most other smart TV devices. 640, 75 degrees. As parents, many of us often worry if we are raising our kids the right way. After the break, we're going to learn how the perfect parent does not exist and what you can do to help raise them into upstanding adults. As parents, most of us have high expectations for our kids, but parenting experts say the perfect parenting image needs to stop. Whether you want your child to make better grades or play a sport or musical instrument, your good intentions may be taken the wrong way. This pressure can cause kids stress and is likely a factor in anxiety and depression among children. Experts say preteens and teenagers need psychological, emotional, and physical space. Without that space, we can't expect our kids to develop properly. This will also prevent them from learning skills they need in order to be successful. It's also important to keep in mind that as our kids get older, they don't need as much structure. It may be hard for parents, but controlling your children too much can lead them to being unorganized and without goals. 
For most parents, it can be tough to scale back from perfectionism, and while it's not easy, it's important to take time for yourself. Most importantly, parenting experts are encouraging parents to make sure they let their kids know that they matter, no matter what. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Time for a traffic update at quarter to seven. Right, right now, there's a major accident, right? Northbound Loop 1604. There is. Uh, was actually two major accidents. So let's get to the first one here. This is the latest one. This one's actually southbound 35 right there at Evans. And as you see, creating uh, quite a bit of backup. But we're going to show that one on Trans Guide in just a second. Then here's the second one. This is the one that Stephanie was just talking about. Northbound 1604. And it's not at Bandera. It's actually on the access road between uh, Bandera and Hausman. Now let's go back to the uh, Trans Guide shot. This is the one southbound 35 at Evans. As you see, we have uh, one vehicle there sideways taking up multiple lanes. So it is going to cause a little bit of a slowdown until we can get everybody off the roadway and open up those lanes once again. Oh no, be careful out there. And a nice picture behind you, Mike. I love this picture. I mean, so much going on in this thing. This is from uh, Mr. Childers, who is one of our regular KSAC Connect photographers. And the bridge with all the designs in there in the metal, the rust on it too. Power line. I mean, every just everything going on. It's a really cool picture. I love that one. So I like these case actors. He was focusing on a storm. He says is 30 miles away in that shot. So, then Katula, yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's uh, amazing on radar. Our radar, you can look and see stuff that's you know almost over by Houston sometimes, depending on how and how tall the clouds get. That's what's amazing because you see those clouds, and then if you look at ray. And by the way, you know, easy way to do that is with the app. And you can find radar, and then it's like, that's that far away. It looks like it's so close, but mm -hmm. that's why it can be uh, somewhat de deceiving sometimes. All right, nice view outside. We do have some humidity out there and lights twinkling off the buildings. All right, as far as rain, now where we stand as of today, in the month of September so far, because last week we had those three days and we just got dumped on. So almost two and a half inches of rain, which is fantastic. 1.6 inches above so far halfway through the month of September. August, of course, we only got nine tenths of an inch of rain and we were about uh, an inch, almost an inch and a quarter below. However, just for the past six weeks, basically, we are on the plus side, which is good news. And obviously that comes on the heels of that very, very dry couple of months we had there throughout most of uh, summer. So maybe some more rain the next couple of days. There's nothing showing up on radar as of right now. Uh, computer models, though, do indicate we will see some kind of developing, especially into the early afternoon hours with some of the afternoon heating. There will be a couple of thunderstorms. Of course, not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but it's a fairly decent chance to see some of this. And that'll be the situation through about dinner time. And we may even still keep a couple of these showers um, just kind of popping up here and there, even on into the uh, evening hours tonight. And then another rain chance moves on in here tomorrow. All right, as far as the hurricane is concerned, it has made landfall uh, about an hour and a half, two hours ago. Category two storm, and it kind of uh, well, didn't do what all the forecasts were saying yesterday because it was such a slow moving storm. And, and the gee whiz with this one is the fact it was moving about two miles per hour, slower than a person walks. And they are looking at feet of rain here, Mobile Bay over in toward uh, the panhandle of Florida over around Pensacola. And then that's going to continue to work its way up to the north and to the northeast. But yeah, the flooding is going to be the huge issue with that storm over there. For us, 85 degrees, partly sunny skies at noon. High temperature today, I'm leaning more toward more clouds to keep us at about 89. Scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms are going to be popping up later on today. Roughly a 40% chance for some rain. Then going into the next few days, still keep a decent rain chance around tomorrow. Basically the first part of the day, Friday. Then after that, we start to clear on out. Nice stretch of weather. Humidity is going to be okay this weekend as well. And plenty of sunshine, upper 80s. A great weekend. That's awesome news. Yes, indeed. Time to make plans starting now. Good idea. Okay. Thank you, Mike. I don't know what I'm going to do. Doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be Outside. lawn mowing, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 649, 75 degrees. And if you wake up early to watch GMSA, you may be one to go to bed early as well. And that could mean eating dinner close to your bedtime. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at the health benefits of eating an early supper. Outside with live cam on your Wednesday morning. Glad you're with us for hump day. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. And another look at traffic with Marcus.
two men become unsuspecting victims of a shooting overnight here on the southeast side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. For one of those men, it was a deadly shooting. Police say that they were simply living their lives when things suddenly changed. Well, officers happened to be in this area near Pecan Valley Road and East South Cross. Around 4 o'clock this morning, they heard the gunshots. They came over. They say they found a man with a rifle and a bulletproof vest crouched down. They believe that he fired the shots that killed a man in his 40s and also wounded another man who was sleeping in his bed. They took that person into custody, but they say that there may have been other people here who were firing back. However, they believe that both of the victims in this case were innocent bystanders. And they say the suspect had been involved in a fight earlier in the evening uh, here at this apartment complex, then came back and, and struck back. Reporting from the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A home on the west side caught fire early this morning. I'm Sarah Costa in the 200 block of Fredell Street. We spoke with one of the homeowners. Two brothers live inside this home. One had left to get food early this morning. Just after 5 o'clock when he came back, his house was on fire. His other, his brother was inside of the home. They were able to get him out safely with the help of neighbors. Firefighters say this home at this time is unlivable with about $20,000 in damage. From the west side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. KSAT community teaming up with HEB Pharmacy. Bear County and the Freeman Coliseum to help get your annual flu shots. There'll be 2,500 flu shots available on a first come, first serve appointment basis for this event. So mark your calendars for September 26th. The flu shot drive is happening from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. We're going to have a link to sign up online at KSAT.com. That would be a Saturday late this month. All right, coming up today on GMS 89, get ready for launch. In this week's Katie Science Lab, Katie Blake is teaching us how to make rockets out of film canisters. So here's what you're going to need. Empty film canisters or small pill bottles, water, and Alka-Seltzer. Tune in today at 9 to see how all that comes together. Go ahead and have one last check of traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And as we get to the accents, uh, this is one northbound 1604 access road between Bandera and Hausman. That one's still in the clearing stages, still causing a backup. And then this one, southbound 35, blocking the two right-hand lanes uh, right there at Evans. And we do have that one on Transguide. So as soon as we can get a tow truck out there, get that vehicle off the roadway, we can open up those lanes once again. Mike. Thank you, sir. Okay, is it my imagination or does the dome look extra lit up this morning? Yeah. It's looked like that for a couple of mornings. It? Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just not noticing it. Maybe I should look closer. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we are going to be up to 85 degrees today at noon. We're in the mid 70s right now. 89 for high temperature. About a 40% chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms today. Then over the next few days, rain chance tomorrow as well as Friday. So at least the window of opportunity is there. Some decent chances and then a good looking weekend. Lots of sunshine. All right, guys, news, weather and traffic updates coming up throughout Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at nine. Bye, guys.